they could do it in one day doesn't mean you can depend on this for a whole year. If Michigan, Michigan is you have slightly technology. above average when it comes to wind power, ranking us against all 50 states. If We're slightly above average. But still, <clears throat> it's a 30% efficiency, meaning you Actually, can generate electricity 30% of the time by wind in Michigan. Actually, DTE's proposal that they just filed with the Public Service Commission a week or 10 days ago had it in the mid-40s. It's not in the mid-40s. So That's it, absurd. It's just well, absurd. It's, technology is increasing, and it's increasing rapidly. It used to be, the when we were first discussing this in 2008, it was like 17 and 20 percent capacity. You just said it's over 30. It is over 30, but that doesn't mean... Increasing it, it, rapidly. That, but, but you want to lock it into the Constitution so if you're wrong... Uh, is there fail-safe language if, if 10 years out we say we can't get to 25? Is there fail-safe language in the amendment that says we can step back and... and, and uh, the legislature always has the ability to, to pause the program, step back, and put it back but, on but the they, they ballot. They can put this on pause? I, I know. Wait a minute. Now, the, the legislature, which the advocates have said we can't trust the legislature. That's why we have to go the constitutional route. Now they want to depend on the legislature. Well, and to you're come saying in and we're rewriting them. the energy yes. law when, in fact, we're not rewriting the energy law. We're simply making two very specific changes: that won't the work. renewable energy standard and the one percent cost cap to give rate payers. But back to my question: So, is there a way to pause this constitutional amendment through so the, the legislature? The legislature always reserves the ability to put a question back on uh, the okay, ballot. Only through a constitutional amendment. Right. Yeah, but also, also though, the, the proposal itself does state that the um, the period of time over which uh, over which a cost um, increase can occur can be lengthened. That's so it, it's a one percent cap. It doesn't say that. It's a one percent <laughs> no, cap. Okay. No, mm -hmm. it doesn't. It, it's but, a one percent right. cap, and it says you can get an extension on that. From so that's correct. Right, it doesn't say that. Okay, so, so we're basically, we have an no, we have an <laughs> operative judge. statute that is working and is in place, and the and we don't nothing in our amendment interrupts that statute. What what who's so going to decide? So the legislature the has the ability. Right. Well, I I think that it's spelled um, out in the current law one on of the ten percent. One of the points that was made in the Citizen Research Council <clears throat> report was that there are no enforcement mechanisms in the proposal. And so um, what I'm wondering is, how are you going to determine that? Is that part of the legislation that the, um, the, the current, legislature would have to put together to accompany this act? There's a current Energy Act, Public Act 295 of mm -hmm. 2008, and that spells out enforcement on making sure that the standard is met. It requires a plan be submitted to the Public Service Commission. There's a two-year review of that plan. And if they don't do it, what happens? That's the 10%. That's mm -hmm. the 10%. All right, but if they, if they don't right, meet it, what but happens? But we make their, the Public Service Commission has some authority. The legislature can, do al what? can also intervene. And you Penalize can also them? go to court. Cost them money? Or let independent power producers produce it. This does not have to be done by the utilities. Right now, the utilities, 50% of the renewable generation is done by independent power producers. This is, this is I'll see you in court. Right. This, that's what this is. Because, but, you know, I, Tim, Tim, I saw your tongue in your cheek when you asked, well, can the legislature pause a constitutional amendment? Of course That wasn't my can. tongue in my cheek. Pause I was rearranging it. my scrambled eggs. I mean, <laughs> this is tailor-made for <laughs> litigation. You know? it, it is, but I have a question for you, mm -hmm. Kent. Um, you talk about how difficult it's going to be to increase the percentage of renewable energy that we use in Michigan. Would not the difficulty of that in itself be a reason why you would want to have a constitutional amendment? No. Why you would want First of all, to I have? Say, I didn't. I didn't presume it was a difficult. way of forcing the state to I, come I, along Karen, and I increase didn't, I didn't its say that. renewable I didn't, energy. And I don't standard. presume automatically it's it, difficult. All I'm saying is, we're at five. The goal is to get to 10 by 2015. At that point, let's evaluate the situation and make well, the adjustment based on things like Ken, cost and availability. In the so, meantime, utilities have made gen new you know, generation decisions that are going to lock Michigan in for 40, 50, 60 years, and the public wants more renewable no, energy. But, but so we're how not do doing they that. insert no, themselves? But Diane, that's Consumers not true. have already <coughs> filed that, that, that they're not closing true. seven plants Th and that, that they're going to be true. building new generation by 2015 that, simply, with the Public that, Service it is, Commission. It is absolutely not true. Well, that's but what they, they filed with the Public Service Commission. Old no, plants. No, that is not down. true. 
before the 2008 law was passed, before the, the 2008 law was passed, consumers and the Public Service Commission said we need a new coal plant online by 2015. Subsequent to that, the world changed. Consumers and the Public Service Commission said we were wrong. We're taking it off the books. We don't need. Nobody is saying we need new generation. Well, that's not true. Online. Yes, it they is are true. anticipating that Michigan, it, because we have, we're going to have Who retirement. Who has proposed a new coal plant? We are going to have retirements of of old coal-fired power plants in Michigan when? because of their age. When? In the next couple of years. No, when? Precisely when are they going to be retired? Consumers has already identified seven of them when, that though? they are in the process of nope. shutting down. Nobody has picked a date saying this is when we're shutting down the plant because a lot of times you can extend the life of a plant. Plus, it's a function of demand. So how long if do demand these plants doesn't have? Go up, how, how long do these plants They're 60 years have? old now. They were built to be 40 years old. Okay, the but problem you, don't, is you don't lock the decision into the Constitution. You make a prudent decision based on the facts. What does this time. proposal do about nuclear energy? It doesn't speak to nuclear energy. Could, could, could you, under this proposal, count nukes as a way to get to 25 percent? No. But in Ohio, it, you Why can't. not? We use the current definition in state law of wind, solar, hydro, and biomass. Why did you leave out nuclear? Nuclear is not in Michigan's renewable energy definition today. Well, but, so but it can be part of that 75%. We don't speak to that, what the 75%. Did you deliberately leave that out as no, an alternative? No, it's not in Michigan's current renewable well, energy Well, you've got a constitutional definition. amendment. You could do anything in this thing. We could. We did not change the definitions. We were very simply going after an increase in the renewable energy standard and that's uh, we amended that only and put a cost cap to protect But you made a payers. deliberate decision not to include nuclear. Is that correct? No. Well, why didn't we you made a decision no. to not change Michigan's but current definition. Well, it, you de facto then made a decision not to put it in. This proposal this proposal was specifically aimed at increasing the renewable energy standard. But we didn't try to do we didn't try to rewrite the energy law. We the, tried to raise the renewable energy standard, put a cost cap to protect cons rate payers, and left the rest of the Energy Act in place. Now here's the current definition in, in the 2008 law for renewable is as follows. Wind, solar, limited hydro, biomass, geothermal, methane from landfills, energy efficiency credits, and clean, and clean energy. This is four things, solar, hydro, wind, and biomass. So what happened to geothermal? Well, geothermal what happened doesn't to create energy. It's an energy efficiency because our... Well, geothermal is included in the current law that you says you're just trying to mirror, but you don't include it. Well, couldn't you? I mean, that was sort energy of just, efficiency that's is sort of included. One of my, you don't include that. Well, ask. we I mean, don't touch energy. This efficiency. has to do with everyone focuses on energy production. Couldn't you see to get to that twenty-five percent standard? Couldn't you see the legislature turn around and, and impose really strict building standards to require the greatest energy efficiency there is, or to require, say, these new we don't solar shingles that people are Michigan talking about and things like that? Michigan has an energy efficiency the, law that requires <coughs> one percent increase in energy efficiency annually in, until it doesn't meet a cost-benefit threshold. We don't touch that. Right, that is it. No, no, wait, but let me. John, that's exactly one of the, the public service. Now? One of PSC's public sector consultants' complaints about the ballot proposal. It doesn't include energy efficiency, which is the low-hanging fruit. Energy efficiency costs 1.6 cents per kilowatt hour versus renewable, nuclear, coal, anything else that is far more and expensive. And we don't alter energy efficiency. Yeah, but you could have included it so that by and, increasing and energy he, efficiency, and then you could have meet the 25%. Are, are we using <laughs> <laughs> under the 2008 law? That's one of our complaints. Are we, use, are, are we using energy efficiency to meet part of that 10% yes, under, under the current yeah, and, law? And, and yes. So, so we it, won't it's have included. that flexibility under exactly. the proposal. We wanted energy, if, if you're going to put something on the ballot for renewable energy, we wanted to put energy efficiency in it as no, part No, actually of it. the utilities didn't want anything. They well, wanted their monopoly status well, maintained I, but I want energy because efficiency. they have the system locked down in Lansing and the, they were had it locked in that the Energy Act was not going to be opened up until it had but fully expired. This is going to create more wind turbines then. Isn't that going to kill more <coughs> bats, more trees, more birds? 
Well, there have been studies so that the migratory patterns of birds are better understood. Let me pull you back to the money thing. The Mr. Don't put the bill away. Technology. You said the bill on the average monthly bill would be 50 cents a month. The Michigan Environmental Council, who for the last decade have intervened as the ratepayer advocate, they did a study that they, a cost analysis that they unveiled this week that indicated that the cost of this proposal would be 50 cents per month. And you said it would be a thousands of dollars for That's your... Absurd, yeah. for 50 cents is absurd. You're not going to pay for the manufacturer there is construction of these... Thousands is absurd, too. I mean, yeah. We're talking more like You what? said a thousand. Yeah, it's going to be thousands of dollars in the... In right. the for, uh, for, yeah. your mom, for your mom. For your mom. It's not capped. The one, no. as a citizen yeah, research, it's thousands, thousands, not capped. thousands of dollars you're using not present... Capped. Can you use a present value on that? I mean, I'm not going to pay an extra thousand bucks a month. Nobody's going to pay an no, extra thousand a bucks time, a month. Over a period, over a period of time. Of time right, so I'm for your pay, mom's bill there, why should now? it go up? Why should I it pay go a couple up? thousand but now? Me why should you pay more? Mr. Sikkim, I want to find Tell me number. I'm not going to anyway. But you're going to pay more on top of whatever. Mr. Sikkim, help me out you here. Know. Why, why should you have to do that? Maybe not. In Illinois, their public service commission said that the renewable energy has saved their rate payers $176 and million. Buying, and they're buying low cost. Mr. Sikkim, what Iowa, is the number per month on your mom's bill if this passes? It's a lot. I, I, I can't do a lot. Yeah, but it is a lot. Because well, it's it's more than 50 cents. How much more? 10 bucks. Right now for the 10% nope. standard. Wait a second. Wait a minute. But, Let me but see, here, here's the problem. Here's the problem. You're no, not no. answering the question. She said it's 50 if cents. You would stop, if you would stop asking the question, I could answer it. All right, go ahead. Just the, for a second, idea, I thought I was the, Jim Lair. Go the, ahead. The idea. <laughs> the, the idea. <laughs> to burn the village yeah. to save it. So. That's exactly. The idea that, that somebody can precisely predict the cost of energy 10 years from now is absurd. Let me ask you a question. Well, I, well, then how did you throw your number out? I give it absurd it, then. But let me ask you a question. <laughs> sure. What's the price of milk going to be in 2025? I have no idea, but I'm not, I don't have a ballot proposal. Jingles? I'm not arguing it. Jingles? You are. Yeah. What, what's the price of gas? If the farm I don't have a ballot well, proposal. Well, how did you come up with $1,000 then? Pass, milk goes to 38 bucks a gallon. Well, I so, can you know. that but you with can't a wind contract. precisely. So then why did what you use $1,000? It could have been $20. That's why you don't put it in the Constitution. With a wind contract, you have a guaranteed delivery price of electricity for 20 to 25 years. What's the cost That's of the today. transmission lines? What will be the cost of the high voltage power lines to get these <coughs> undefined wind farms in terms of location <coughs> To residents What's going and to be the center? cost of transmission far, huh? of transmission <coughs> lines for upgrades that need to happen into the, the transmission future? Transmission lines are already We've there. We've already built the transmission lines for wind in the entire thumb area of Michigan. We have not. That was under the ten percent proposal. The, the, yes, they're they're there. Where's the next wind farm going to go if this passes? All right, out of <laughs> fairness here, just a second. I need to get this sound bite so I can use it. Okay. <laughs> I have her on the record saying it's fifty cents. Your response is it's the bill will go up, but you don't know by how no, much. It, no, that's not what I said. All right, I please. I said it's going to be thousands of dollars over a short period of time to the average resident and business in Michigan. But yet you have no evidence to back that number up. That's not true. We do have evidence. You know, the $12.5 billion is taking a $4 million per windmill times 3,100 windmills to get to this standard, and that's $12.5 so billion. So it's about 100 bucks a month? It, it's going to be... Over a short period of time, it's going to be thousands of dollars to the average ratepayer in Michigan. Over two or three years. Over a short period of time, it's going to be thousands of dollars to the average ratepayer in Michigan. Well, what's that's absurd a, about that's it? That's absurd. There's a one percent cost cap, first of all, and so the maximum amount that a residential ratepayer would see is approximately a dollar and twenty-five cents a month. The Michigan Environmental Council, who has for a decade intervened as the ratepayer advocate, says it's closer to fifty cents. It's going to be thousands of dollars to the average rate payer in Michigan over a short period of time. The 1% cap, as the Citizens Research Council said, is not a cap. It doesn't cover many things that are covered. And the other thing that is not being disclosed to people is they have to pay a sales tax on their bill. And your sales tax are going to go up. This is the first time the, the Michigan Constitution will be amended for people to have to pay a sales tax increase. Isn't that true? The sales They're tax, the sales tax is on every monthly bill. And the legislature could deal with the sales tax. By renewable. reducing the rate? George they, Montgomery kept trying to take utilities off. What's to stop the legislature under this circumstance to turn around and say, well, then we'll, we'll take, we'll, we won't charge sales tax on, on the utilities? But, but why would you pass a constitutional amendment that <coughs> obligates everybody to pay an additional sales tax and then rely on the legislature to correct your mistake? 
I thought the legislature was not trusted, this which is why you had to go to the ballot. This a goal that gives business certainty that we're going to be well, using 25% renewable so. energy by 2025 not, with a cost cap here. to guarantee ratepayers some certainty and instructs the legislature to put incentives to hire Michigan workers. Who originally source. had this idea? Who came to you first and said, hey, we're thinking about doing this. Who was that? This evolved over the last two or three years. You remember there was great discussion during the 2008 law. A lot of people weren't happy with the 10%. They thought that it was, wasn't enough. And as it turned out, it was pretty easily achievable by the Public Service Commission's own report. Mm -hmm. We're going to meet that <clears throat> standard, likely meet that standard ahead of time, and we're saying don't stop. Let's continue the incremental increase, take advantage of all the advancements in technology along the way, and have more stability and certainty for 25% of our portfolio, our energy mix, because you can get those long-term fixed contracts instead of the volatility of the cost of fuel for transportation, environmental regulations, waste disposal, so that it helps rein in some of these high so costs. What, are, of what are some names of some people who came to you and said, yeah, we should do this? It's this broad coalition that we have right well, now. Who's the first the one? Somebody had to be the first phone call that said, hey, here's, we're thinking about doing it. Who well, was like that? Like James Clift or somebody? The Michigan Environmental Council was right in the center of all of this from the beginning. Okay. So it, it was a coalition. It was a coalition. And, and Mr. Sycamore, in a previous life, you were a green, okay? You worked for an environmental thing. What what is so abhorrent to you about creating more energy that is healthier for the state? I am a green. I am an environmentalist. I I support renewable energy. I just don't think you have to forego common sense and sound judgment to do that. Um, going to 10 percent when you started at 2 percent is an aggressive standard. We're at five. We're talking about doubling it in two years. But saying let's do it in a way that's um, affordable, um, that's reliable, um, that's flexible so you don't lock it into the Constitution doesn't mean you have to forego your belief in environmental protection and renewable energy. Well, but the utilities want to lock us into decisions on new generation that are going to be occurring before this Energy Act expires. And that will lock the ratepayers of Michigan into 40, 50, 60, 60 years of generation technology that was really last century. But Tim, you We're saying for 25% of that, let's...